，欢迎大家来到 Crasky 的两零两零毕业典礼。今朝侬能跟阿拉一道来参加搿只介济个场合，阿拉真个老开心个。我是叫 VB Crasky College 的 Commencement Judge 阿爷呢，咱侬包可喜欢搿头些 Scars 么？搿头啥地方上门会？我是马贝姆，来参加啥事业？是 Crasky 阿拉 Fine Wrestling。אנחנו שמחים מאוד שיכולתם להצטרף אלינו היום לאירוע המיוחד הזה. שאני שמי נאם קרסקי צ'ורופשיקה או שינגה סור חוניין חמידה. עוד נראה לנו בצין צ'ריה חמקה התשושה סור אורינן צ'ין צ'ימרו כיפרנידה. אני אין דייגה לידה זי לינג לי לינג לינג קרסקי כפת יפים לינג. גם יא חוקו הן דייגה תומות די הן ג'וקה גם דקתי כיאצי. Hello, my name is Rebecca Hernandez and I am the director of the American Indian Resource Center at UC Santa Cruz. It is my privilege to read the land acknowledgement today. UCSC is located on the unceded territory of the Awaswa-speaking Yupi tribe. The Amamutsan tribal band comprised of the descendants of indigenous people taken to missions Santa Cruz and San Juan Bautista during Spanish colonization of the Central Coast is today working hard to restore traditional stewardship practices on these lands and heal from historical trauma. Greetings and welcome, family, friends, community, and Kresge College class of 2020. It's lovely to almost see you and I can't wait to see you for real on the actual day of our commencement as we come together in real time to watch this video. If you were a transfer student, you might remember an orientation in 2018 or 2017, and you might remember I asked you why you'd chosen UC Santa Cruz. I wanted to know the answers, and you gave them. Some said for liberal arts, some said for research opportunities, for the redwoods or the surf, but I pushed back a little. Um, I asked you, why the liberal arts? What do they offer you? Um, is it interdisciplinary thinking? Is it the small class sizes? Uh, the sense of intellectual community? And for those of you who told me you were proud to be admitted to a world-class research institution, I asked you, what is it about that work that matters? We do work here ranging from dark galaxies to prison justice to natural language processing to immunodeficiency, and we take it up with uncommon integrity and imagination. And I found that some of you were inspired to come here to be somewhere where the lecturer behind the podium was only moonlighting as a teacher, a professor whose day job was to reshape the future of human knowledge. Thank you, transfer students, for that conversation. Some of us go back even further. Maybe I met you on a late summer Wednesday evening, your first week of college life. And if it was 2016, it was my first time at the helm of one of the most important courses you ever took. I welcomed you to Kresge Corps. I probably made you tap your feet and taught you about syncopation and its role in African-American music discourse. Uh, and we started a liberal arts journey. I asked you why, in a society with laws that guarantee equal protection, in a society with the 1964 Civil Rights Act, why would we have structural racism? Why would true authority and wealth be so inaccessible to most of us? And the answer had nothing to do with laws. The answer, over the next 10 weeks, emerged in the deployment of power and representation. Power and representation. I wonder whether that course could mean something new to you right now. 45 years ago, in 1975, Kresge's first four-year students did what we're doing now. They held a commencement, and they attempted to take stock of their accomplishments, and they resonated with one another's dreams. But 1975 was auspicious. In the mid-1970s, middle-class and working-class earnings started to stagnate relative to productivity. I'm not an economist, but five years ago, the Economic Policy Institute sh showed us that in addition to bringing us the first graduating class of the great Kresge College experiment and so many other college experiments around the country, the mid-1970s was a moment of change in the history of American capitalism. Before then, prosperity and economic security grew hand in hand with a quickly rising modern economy. 
But after that, as we begin maybe the most dramatic accumulation of global wealth in the history of our species, most of us, the working class and the middle class, stood still. And in 1975, a UCSC student named Lori Garrett earned her degree in biology, and she stood where you're standing now. I don't know what was going through Lori Garrett's mind at commencement, but I know that over the next 20 years, she would revolutionize science journalism with work that led a new consensus about global pandemics. She showed us the ugliest side of our economy yet, explaining that perverse imbalances of poverty and wealth and atrocious disruptions of biodiverse ecosystems were among the factors that made massive pandemics inevitable. I didn't know Garrett went to UCSC when I read it, and I didn't know I would one day be a professor here or anywhere. Uh, I was just trying to be the lead singer in a grunge band. It's been a quarter century since then, and I'm not sure how much we've learned. I'm telling you about Lori Garrett now because her challenge in 1975 is a kind of a, a telescopic mirror of yours, pointing toward yours from the past. She knew she needed to do more than great biology and more than great sociology to understand how epidemics are connected to social irresponsibility. It's no surprise that UCSC, a campus that favors interdisciplinarity and that favors conversations across disciplines, produced the first science journalist to knit this fabric together and show us what we need to do to make the world safe again. But despite the alarm she sounded, we still mostly accept neoliberal myths that your hours of labor and the money that you can leverage with it are a measure of your worth, and that wealth in this system is fairly earned. We've seen our own prosperity stagnate in this community, and as 2020 rolled in, our graduate students raised their own alarm. They asked for a cost of living adjustment, and in doing so, raised awareness of California's failure to honor its promise, the promise of the California State Master Plan of 1965, to make education widely accessible and to make tuition free. Their campaign divided even the most conscientious communities on our campus, a campus that for nearly a decade has struggled with deeply entrenched inequities. We experience nearly unparalleled food and housing insecurity among undergraduates, graduates, and staff relative to other campuses. I want to turn your attention back to that core course again, Power and Representation, and in particular to a text by Robin D.G. Kelly that I hope some of you remember. And I hope you remember that in that text he pointed out that there are very few contemporary political spaces where the energies of love and imagination are understood and respected as powerful social forces. Kelly asked whether our passion for education could go beyond mere critique and become dreams of freedom. Who besides you knows now what dreams your education could bring us? How much of your knowledge in the next quarter century will become the heart of the better world we dreamed about when we first came together at Kresge College? I hope you know that your degree and your revolutionary dreams are among our greatest resources as a species. Congratulations, class of 2020. You are our dream come true. Thank you for all you have given us, and thank you for being the heart of Kresge College. Many of you will have no idea at all who I am. Some of you may recognize me from any number of performances I've given in pursuit of my music degree. A smaller number of you by now recognize my voices. Can I have your attention, everybody? Got a few announcements from the TGA. An even smaller group have memories of me as that blonde in my core class, or a strobe lit memory of my face from that laser tag night full of laughter being drowned out by Overwatch music. A very small group of you will remember living with me and going with me to those events. I speak to you today, hopefully, as a representative of the invisible universality of mental illness. How it can hide undiagnosed behind a busy exterior, behind unsaid glances and unspoken truths. I speak to you today because the path from hating to see the sun go down in a crowded plenary to where we are today is only one of a hundred you're going to have to walk. 
your path has been and will be radically different from those of your neighbors and friends. I'm speaking here today in front of all of you because like many others among us, most of them invisible to you, I almost didn't make it. At the start of winter quarter, I experienced a profound period of grief and loss and I didn't get better. I learned that things I'd ignored previously, warning signs, symptoms, were all too much for me now. My life fell apart before my eyes and I couldn't take care of myself while it happened. I, I developed a habit of walking to the point of exhaustion. I'd put my headphones on, leave my apartment, pick a direction, and just go. I told myself I was exploring, going to places I'd never seen before. I found that some buildings didn't lock at night, buildings I'd heard of but had never taken classes in. I started wandering them, and sometimes it helped. My problems receded. But sometimes those walks ended with me finding a ledge and just staring over it. I was transfixed, staring for minutes at a time. Eventually, I'd pull myself away, sometimes to wander home, sometimes to a negligently unlocked conference room to curl up under the table, sobbing and alone. I know some of this may be difficult to hear at a commencement address, but I hope that for some of you, this speech can help express the things you felt and never said. On Monday, February 24th of this year, I found that a popular building on campus had a security flaw that gave me roof access. By the time I awoke the next morning, I realized that I had a specific and detailed plan. I brushed that aside, telling myself that I always made plans, just in case. This was the same, just idle preparation. It wasn't. After another long day, I left a room full of people I trusted because it had gotten too full and too loud too fast, and I went outside alone. I realized then that my planning wasn't idle, that I felt more unsafe around myself than I ever had. I stood at the crossroads between two unpleasant and difficult paths. I could go back to my apartment, gather the things I needed, write down the note I'd already prepared, my, prepared in my head, and go attempt to kill myself or try something, anything, to find another way out. I chose to call for help. I chose to be taken into treatment. When my time came, I was taken by ambulance to the Behavioral Health Unit of Good Samaritan Hospital for 12 days. Those 12 days saved my life. The psych ward is an impossible experience to describe to those who've never been through it. I'll try to tie it back to a common reference point for us Cresby kids, a greater Cresby family, just try to follow along. Um, using what I'll call the uh, Carsonian model of analysis, power and representation. In the psych ward, you lose the power to tie your own shoes. If you ask for your shoes back, you will be given them without the laces, because any form of string could represent an avenue for self-harm. In the psych ward, you lose the power to walk outside of the confines of the unit until a psychiatrist signs off on your release. You represent a threat to your safety or that of others and cannot be released into the general population. That label and that shame won't leave you for a long time. In the psych ward, you can lose the power to sleep with blankets and a pillow. If, through your words and actions, you make sheets represent the pieces of a suicidal plan, you will spend the night in a room that has a camera pointed directly at you as you try to sleep with your jacket covering your legs. In the psych ward, things you felt for years are given concrete representation as the diseases and symptoms are named and embodied in the stories of your fellow patients. You're given the power to fight the battles you're going to have to fight for the rest of your life because your enemy is now named and thus known. However, in the psych ward, you gain the power to confront and change the parts of yourself that led you there. That path may be powerful, may even be hopeful, but it will be hard. Constantly changing medications and doses will lead you on a path to uncertainty and hopelessness. You don't just get handed a tray of food and some pills and get to leave. You have to grow and learn. You have to take the power to leave your bed. Take the power to listen to the information being given to you. Take the power to figure out how this new knowledge and these new skills apply to you. Much like the path to your degree, the lessons will be hard, but the rewards worth the cost. 
Some things will bounce right off. Some things will resonate so perfectly, your brain will still hum with sympathetic vibrations weeks or months later. In many ways, the psych ward is a lot like college, although you'll leave the ward with slightly less debt. Uh, in both, the people walking past parallel or intersecting with yours will range from the well-intentioned to the uncaring, but most of them simply won't know how to communicate with you. It almost feels like moving into the apartments for the first time. Everyone's a little uncomfortable, no one is 100% sure what the future holds or how to act in their new world. But things settle. People learn a bit of how to talk to each other, at least a little. The roommate who's going to leave a pot of lentils boiling on the stove and almost set building eight on fire is identified and isolated. The habits that hold you back around other people are identified and isolated. You've used your power to forge a better version of yourself, older, wiser, lovingly and bitterly educated. My journey from moving into that little second story triple in 2016 to today set me on a path to finding the power to confront and manage my illnesses. For now, it's enough that when my path comes to a cliff, I don't stare off it. And when the shadow of that impulse pulled me back to that roof door, it was locked. And I have rarely seen such a beautiful sight. So Kresge, I did make it here. We made it here. I'll keep walking my path, and I hope my words help you to walk yours. Thank you. Good morning, faculty, staff, friends, and family in class of 2020. I'm May Freitas, a literature major in the concentration of creative writing and a transfer student. Our journey to this moment were diverse, but one we experienced together, even though recently it was across the nation and in many continents. When I envisioned my senior year, I imagined going to Pistor Scholar meet and greets and witnessing an alpha male turkey chase a student or two. I picture writing sessions on the log benches at social sciences too, and going to poetry slams on open mic night. I saw long nights in McHenry during midterms and finals and drinking chai tea lattes at Stevenson's Cafe. I visualized sending Snapchats of fawns grazing with their mothers and Sammy the slug after the rain. I expected to present my research at the undergraduate research symposium. I thought I would enjoy a sunset bonfire at the beach with my friends and creative writing peeps towards the last days of spring quarter. Our senior year was full of unforeseen circumstances, but it was one that showed us the strength of the human spirit and connected us in new ways. We faced diverse challenges like no class before us, we woke to cruise alerts at 6 a.m., pg e blackouts, cola strikers, and COVID-19 updates. We were forced into a new reality with our education. As classes were moved to Zoom and Canvas, we moved home or sheltered in place on an empty campus or nearby. We found the new and improved version of senioritis. We laughed and facepalmed as our parents and grandparents made TikTok videos. We witnessed toilet paper become a hot commodity and took hikes and selfies with face masks. Sadly, we knew someone infected by coronavirus, suspected those untested, and worse, someone who died. We discussed what our new realities would look like when the world is open again and learned a, new, a grim new practice, social distancing. However, we discovered we are more linked than we imagined and learned even in an empty room after Zooming, we're not alone. We recognize that we have communities who love us and we have supported each other along the way. We discovered the, we discovered the value of calling instead of texting and rediscovered little things like stargazing and working around the rules to meet in person, wearing a mask and remaining six feet apart. In class, we enjoyed our peers' chaotic households interjecting into our classrooms, cats sniffing cameras, a dog humping a pillow in the background. We witnessed entire classes visibly laughing when a private moment was spoken without muting the mic. We snickered to ourselves but felt bad as our poor professors struggled to adapt to online education. 
we relied on them far more this year. They earned the multi-title educator, mentor, and counselor. We observed Zoom chat feeds full of encouragement, wisdom, and laughter, and secretly, or not so secretly, sent private chats to each other to check in and discuss personal matters too intimate for their classroom. Most importantly, we appreciate each other in a new way and form lifelong kinships as we learned a new normal. I reflect on our journey together with mixed emotions, and I remember the words of the great Winnie the Pooh. How lucky am I that something that makes saying goodbye so hard. Just as we came together in diverse ways, we are graduating and moving on in new ways. What is next is much undetermined as it is planned. Our paths are bright and some move, as some move on to graduate school in pursuit of mastering their technique. And others shelter in place to apply for jobs, internships, and fellowships. As we prepare, as we prepare to say goodbye, be proud of the degrees we've earned. And remember, we worked harder and accomplished more than we ex expected and found that we are stronger than we thought. We are blessed to experience these years together and we are united by our adventures, laughter, tears, and our time at UC Santa Cruz. I stand here today not to say goodbye, but rather to celebrate with you as we add one more memory to take with us. Wherever our horizons break, know our bond is real and unbreakable. Thank you, class of 2020. Good luck, go forth, and prosper. Hello, my name is Reina Grande, and I am the author of the books, The Distance Between Us and A Dream Called Home. The day I walked across the stage to receive my university diploma was one of the happiest and proudest days of my life. That day, I made history by becoming the first in my family to obtain a university degree. I am from Mexico, from the state of Guerrero, which is the second poorest state in the country. My family was very poor, and because of our poverty, we didn't have access to education. My maternal grandfather was illiterate. My father only went to the third grade and my mother only went to the sixth grade. When we immigrated to the United States, my father was determined that his children get an education. He knew that education was the key to the American dream and he demanded perfect grades and perfect attendance from us. One of the things I loved about my father was that he was a big dreamer and he would always talk about the dreams that he had for us and the kind of future that he wanted for us. He would tell us how he wanted us to get a higher education, to have a great career one day, to be homeowners and to have money for retirement. His dreams became my dreams and I dreamed of the day when I would get my university degree, when I would have a career and be a working professional, where I could use my creativity and my talent to transform myself and to transform the world. My time at the university was really special to me. When I first arrived, I felt lonely and I felt scared. I was lonely because I missed my family. I had left everyone behind and had arrived in a city, in a place where I didn't know anybody. So I was surrounded by strangers. I was also scared because there were not a whole lot of Latinos at the university. I was one of the few Latino students in my creative writing classes and I felt out of place. I felt that I didn't belong. I was afraid that I didn't have the skills, the talent, the ability, the creativity to succeed. And so I focused on school and I put all of my time and energy into making myself a good university student. I wanted to learn all the techniques and skills that I needed in order to succeed as a professional writer. I wanted to write stories that celebrate my Latino culture, stories that celebrate who I am, a Mexican immigrant, a border crosser, an English learner, a woman of color. I believe that we all have stories to tell, that our stories matter, that we all have to celebrate who we are 
and where we come from. You can do that by staying focused in school, striving and persevering to reach your goals. Cling to your dreams. Don't let go of them. Don't let anybody take your dreams away from you. I wanna wish you all the best in your journeys as university students and beyond. I wish that you find your passion. I wish that you find the perfect career that brings you joy and a deep satisfaction in knowing that through your talents, your creativity, and your skills, you have been able to transform yourself and transform the world. Make this a better place for all of us. Thank you so much. Maya Abi. Carlos Aaron Acevas Sotelo. Domenica Connolly Adamson. Luz Edith Aguilera. Yasar Ali Albarakat. Jacqueline Alvarez. Pablo A. Alvarez. Elsa Yesenia Anaya. Joan Anchetta. Athena Sabaton Aragon. Margarita Davalos Arias. Ethan G. Asar. Genesis Avia Heredia. Natalie Amelia Ayela. Shannon Nicole Baker. Sabina Armand Ball. Melissa Banuelos. Meher Bhatti. Abby Boyle. Diana Bracamantes Vargas. Sean Ryan Bradley. Annika Jutta Broucher. Kalina R. Brown. Dale Calhoun. Leslie Campos. Julia Miranda Canlas. Juan Castanon. Quinn Chalmers. Walden Ansel Chan. Yutong Chen. Sage Hart Christensen. Josiah David Caio Sizzler. Cameron Clark. Kayla Hope Clementson. Kelsey Nicole Cochran. Gigi Coglin. Sheila Guadalupe Conrado. Gabriela Sarah Contreras. 
Isabella Correa Opera. Emma Catherine Cosby. Benjamin Chen Coulson. Jake Cozy. Eli Crespin. Claudia Cruz. Jace Onani Cubberly Thomas. Jack A. Cunio. Lexi Dalsis. Miles William Dunlavy Dawes. Natasha Dean. Claudia Duras. Marie Jane DeShetler. Callista Marie Dilliner. Ronnie M. Dorman. Nicholas Anthony Domich. Isabel Tess Veronica Donahoe. Eve Gabrielle Dorfman. Hayden Dover. Mia Nicole Drake. Joseph Duer. Krista Dugan. Donnie L. Duran. Samantha Finkston Edwards. Christina Louise Eldridge. Madeline Piper Evans. Michael Farrell. Amanda S. Fasunov. Jessica Ann Fleming. Marisol Isabel Flores. Patricia Flores Rosas. May Alexandria Freitas. Sarah E. Fry. Natalie Grace Gallagher. Alexia Lourdes Garcia. Roxanne W. Gatihi. Almara Garabaygi. Spencer Charles Gilbert. Kelly Godet Matthews. Madison Nicole Gonzalez Jensen. Nancy P. Gonzalez Reyes. Sarah Elizabeth Gordon. Christopher Green. Iris Grutenhus. Christopher George Gunter. Yaibo Wu. Alyssa Abigail Guther. 
Timothy Dean Haggerty. Stephanie Hamilton. Bronwyn Hardy. Melinda B. Hernandez. Yuleni Hernandez Lopez. Grace Ho Russell. Emily Amanda Hugerworth. Lexi Houchins. Deirdre R. Iams McGuire. Alyssa Jacobson. Maya Jane Jensen. Raphael Jensen. Caleb M. Jafrian Hanrahan. Zoe Johnston. Tanner Judge. Jessica Eugene Jung. Emma Louise Kaplan. Matthew J. Kelly. Zen P. Kelly. Mayuki Kimura. Mira Kirilova. Alexandra Lado Korolkov. Daisy Kuang. Tyler John Humes. Myro Kunsi. Emily Rose Labrador. Austin Lee. Calvin Kai Lee. Ashley Janley Leon. Dunn Lu. Emily Lowe. Olivia Ruth Logan. Taney Lopez Cortez. Veronica Luke. Linda Lou. My Knock Lie. Hauji Mao. Ian Gordon Mackey. Noe Madriano Hernandez. Gabrielle Alexis McGee. Elliot Yedidiah Makani. Preeti Mall. Lily Monzo. Jace Marcos. Masha Maskell. Fortunata Matias. Tia A. Mayer. Emily McIntyre. Aiden McLean. 
Candace Ann McMurphy. Melissa Janelle McNerney. Jessica Medina. Taylor Mendiola. Alyssa Marie Mendoza. Sergio Mariagas Mera. Fernando Edward Mercado. Brianna Miller. Alex Missman. Mitchell Mockery. Lauren Candace Monk. Hannah Avalyn Montgomery. Celinda Sarah Alicia Montoya. Juan Pablo Morales. Jenna L. Morajan. Asha Morris. Matthew Moser. Amina Mohammed. Isaiah Samuel Mullen. Karina Isabel Munoz. Brian Naranjo. Roberto Naranjo. Destiny Negrete. Jimmy Chuang Nguyen. Timothy T. Nguyen. Elena Noble. Summer Noelette. Aliyah Gabrielle Nunez. Cassandra Nunez de la Torre. Kevin Oliveira. Ariana Michelle Anga. Navi Oran. Celeste Orozco. Natalie Orozco. Romina Borangao. Megan Patterson. McKenna Sue Perez. Vanessa Davina Perez. Stephen Lamb Fan. Gabriella Ann Louise Pleasant. Evan R. Plummer. Brighton Plush. Sujata Pakrell. Christopher Powell. Matthew Graham Price. Katharia Hong Prousri. Lena Tunhu Quouch. Matthew Kevin Casada. 
Jasmine Santana Ramirez. Matthew Ramirez. Miriam Liliana Ramirez. Priscilla E. Ramos. Kelly Jane Rasmussen. Jasmine N. Regalado. Christopher G. Reithel. Sydney Pearl Rep. Yautzin Resendez. Daniel Reyes. Michael Walter Ritchie. Jennifer Rodriguez. Jody A. Romero. Hanno Rosner. Jack Rovero. Lillian A. Rubenaker. Sarah Janine Russell. Natalie Annabeth Serafian. Mary Rose Shepper. Kai Schneidegers. Scott Schroeder. Jasmine Shafiq. Lania Simone Bennett. Lara Soufe. Carly Smith. Jesse Smith. Jennifer Solano. Carly M. Sproul. Taylor Stevenson. Oceana Stewart. Daniel Subdiaz. Clara Sue. Ying Sun. Max Mason Tarlov. Lindsay Isabella Tavares Sabido. Miguel Toner. Nancy Tong. Damon Toasty. Fatanai Christina Zakiris. Victor Shea. Eric Zhang. Nick Ullig. Vishal S. Vadadhai. Yanaitza Valdivia Vasquez. Katie Valentine. Jesus Roberto Valenzuela. Carrie Ivana Vasquez. Nathaniel Veach. 
Keegan Vernon Clay. Diane Wang. Jingheng Wang. Manik Wasan. Emily J. Watton. Maxwell A. Weber. Jianjine Wei. Allison Westerman. Emily Elizabeth Wheeler. Nathan White. Alexander Widman. Majadai Corazon Williams. Alan Wong. Kate Elizabeth Woodcraft. Zifeng Zhu. Alan Yu. Crystal Yu. Yao Yang Gordo Yu. Jen Yu. Maya May Zambas. King He Zhang. Jinji Zhang. Yo Yo Zhao. Students, please rise if you are able. Kresge College, Class of 2020. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Regents and the President of the University of California, I now confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Sciences as appropriate with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. You may now move your tassels from right to left, signifying the conferral of your degree. Graduates, you accomplished much in your time at UC Santa Cruz. And despite the current challenges, I know that great things lie ahead for you. You leave us now as Banana Slug alumni, but we hope that you will keep in touch. Please stay safe, stay well, and stay connected. Congratulations and good luck. <laughs>